Hi, we've reached session three of our class called You on Mission. The foremost thing that we can see as an example in Jesus Christ's life is that Jesus prayed. And not only did he pray as far as talking to God, but that prayer was accompanied by listening to God and obeying God. So we're going to look at some scriptures and see how that gets lived out in Jesus's life. Uh, the first part, the idea that Jesus uh, obeyed and listened, we can see in a couple of places in the in the book of John. So first I want to read from John chapter 5, verses 19 and following. It says this, Jesus gave him this answer. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees the father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and then shows him and shows him all he does. And then later on, Jesus would say, Something very similar in John chapter 12, verse 47 through 50. As for the person who hears my words, but does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and who does not accept my words. The very word which I spoke will condemn him on that last day. For I did not speak of my own accord, but the father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Now, I guess we could see this as some kind of before Jesus came to earth, God the Father had given, given him this insight and this knowledge. Um, but the more likely explanation is that in Jesus' prayer, God gives him a window into seeing what he wants Jesus to do and specifically, and through his Holy Spirit, reveals to Jesus what he wants Jesus to say. Uh, all right, so can we have the same kind of connection with God? I think the answer is certainly yes, we can. And so in our mission, you know, and, and that's the other thing about Jesus is his mission seems like, like he so clearly knows what his mission is. And so how does Jesus know that? He knows because he prays and he asks God and he wrestles with God. And we can see that at the end of his life, right? And we, he goes and he prays in Gethsemane and he says, Father, take this cup from me, but not, not my will, but yours be done. And so, so Jesus understood clearly what the Father's will was in a general sense, but also his very specific will for Jesus's life. This is one of our biggest issues in the U.S. today, right? We, we don't know, well, what's, what's the purpose of my life? Well, the purpose of your life is to glorify God and make disciples. And so how does that get lived out? We, we only can know the specifics when we go to God in prayer. And not just us talking to God and asking God, but then taking the time to listen and obey when we reveal those specific things. So we can follow Jesus' example in that. Now, if we go deeper into it, we know that Jesus was supposed to make disciples. We see a couple of things in Jesus' life. In Luke chapter 6, Jesus went to pray for those disciples. Now, he had a lot of followers, but he goes up on the mountainside and he prays all night. And then he comes down and chooses the 12. So before Jesus even really calls people or chooses the 12, he spends a whole night and probably more before that, but an intense night of prayer asking God who the 12 should be. Later on in Luke chapter 22, uh, there's a little bit of a run in with Peter. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So we see that Jesus prays before he even selects Simon as an apostle. But then also in his discipling of him, while, while he's still there with him, he prays for Simon in different times when he knows it's going to be more difficult. Jesus prays for the disciples for their protection while he's with them, but also when he knows that he's about to leave them. In John chapter 17, he prays for his disciples. He prays for future disciples, but specifically he says this in John chapter 17 and verse 15. He says, my prayer is not that you would take them out of the world, but that you would protect them from the evil one. He says, uh, they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, 
I have sent them into the world. And so part of our mission in making disciples is going to be that we're going to have to choose disciples, we're going to have to live with disciples, and we're going to have to leave disciples because we're going to be sending them out. And throughout that entire process, we can see that Jesus Christ models for us the discipline of prayer, right? Praying so that we're reminded of what our mission is, prayer for who those disciples should be, who are the people that we should really, really pour into, And then as we're pouring into them, know that Satan's going to be attacking them and trying to pull them away from the Lord. So we pray for their protection. And then we know that the time is coming that we have to send them out so that they can go be disciple makers. And we pray that God will keep them and hold them and continue to protect them.